Hello, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to St. John the Evangelist. My name is David Flournoy. Uh, I just have a few notes before we begin. I'm sure all of you candidates are wondering uh, what you're going to have to say in front of everyone. So we'll just do a quick run through right now before we start. First off is after the readings and the homily from our regional bishop, Bishop Hennessy, we're going to renew our baptismal promises. So the bishop will ask us a series of questions. The answer is, I do. So all the candidates, all you just have to say is, I do. Uh, now, the bishop will remind us beforehand, but it's good to know going forward. Now, later on, when you actually come up, each of you, with your sponsor and your parents to be anointed with the chrism oil, the first thing that you should that you should do in this interaction with the bishop is the sponsor should introduce the ca their candidate to the bishop. So sponsors, make sure you're ready to just say a, a quick line. This is my niece. Her name is, and then you say the saint name that she will be taking. Or, hello, this is my grandson. His name is Michael. And it's the saint name. So it should be that name that you have on that name tag there. Now after that, so that'll be the first thing, the sponsor will speak first when you come up to the bishop. Then the bishop will say, when he anoints the candidate with oil, he'll say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your response to that is just, amen. So that's pretty simple. Then after that, he will say, peace be with you, and you say, and with your spirit. So let's practice that right now. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, amen. And peace be with you, and with your spirit. Now once you say in with your spirit, you can all then process to either side to go back to your pew. So that's what that will look like. Now also, just, just to make sure we all understand, it's the sponsor, the candidate, and the parents that will be coming up. So all three or two of you will be putting your hands on the candidate's shoulder uh, when they're receiving the the anointing of the oil. Make sure that those four of you who are coming up are on the aisle seats. So if you have to readjust who's sitting where in the pew, make sure to do that before we begin. Lastly, uh, we will have a photographer who will be stationed up here in the sanctuary to have a great shot of that moment of the anointing of the oil. So we ask that, that you all refrain from taking photos during the liturgy. We'll share all of the photos with all of you afterwards, so don't worry about not having a good photo. And on your way out, make sure that you go out the front doors just where you came in because we'll have your certificates. And for those of you who did not go to the retreat or weren't able to go to a retreat yet, you'll have a little surprise in addition to that certificate. So make sure to grab that on the way out. I believe that's everything, so we'll begin in a few moments. Thank you.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Jesus showed the apostles that he was alive by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. 
on the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brother Jeremy and your staff, it's always good to be out this way. Um, I was in Littleton this, ap this morning and this afternoon for two confirmations and then over to here, but uh, I live in Haverhill and I deliberately, whenever I come out this way, I take all the back roads. Uh, it takes about an hour and a half, but you know what? It just reminds me whenever I'm out this way that you live in the most beautiful part of the archdiocese out here. So it's uh, I love to come and I, it's kind of selfish of me, but I schedule events out this way in October, in the height of the foliage, too. So, uh, but it's just, I, it's just a beautiful part of the archdiocese out here. You know, just to, for those to be confirmed, uh, this, nothing has been cut out. This is the full ritual of confirmation. The difference is that it's taking place apart from mass. COVID makes it necessary. We limit the number of people. We kind of limit the number of time inside of a building. But if there are any grandparents here today, it is certain that when you were confirmed, this is the way it was done. Confirmation outside of mass. Back then, that was the only way it was done. Confirmation outside of mass. And by the way, most parishes up in this region uh, have already made the decision that they're gonna keep doing it this way. Back to the way when we were kids. Uh, it's the less people, it seems it's more solemn, and the focus is much more on confirmation itself. So most parishes will keep doing it this way. You know, in, that deacon, in the reading that the deacon just read for us, he told us what happened on Easter Sunday morning and on the Sunday after Easter. But in order to really understand it, you have to remember that for three years, Jesus was with his apostles and his disciples, teaching them, instructing them. I will be put to death on, the th on Jerusalem, but on the third day, I'll be raised in the flesh. Three years, I'll be put to death in Jerusalem, but on the third day, I'll be raised in the flesh. This was such an extraordinary concept that they could not get their minds around it. Back then, those few Jews that did believe in resurrection, they believed in some kind of a ghostly existence at the end of world, the time that only the best of the best would participate. But Jesus was saying something radically different. I will be put to death, but on the third day, I'll be raised in the flesh. I am convinced that on Easter Sunday morning, nobody believed him. Nobody. 
They didn't get it. And it was even harder for them because they saw him crucified. And they knew what crucifixion did to a body. And he was saying, I'll be raised in the flesh. Nobody believed him Easter. Maybe you're thinking, oh, what about we remember Easter? Wasn't there a group of women making their way to the tomb early in the morning? Well, yes, that is true. But they were not going to greet a risen Lord. It was their intention to anoint a dead body. Nobody got it. And so what happened on Easter Sunday, Jesus went through locked doors and said, peace be with you. The greeting that a bishop is privileged to use at any ceremony that I do. Peace be with you. He was declaring Good Friday was over for him and letting us know that Good Friday can be over for us. Especially after these last so many months, how many people are stuck in Good Friday? And we just need to hear that message. Peace be with you. I keep thinking whenever I read that gospel, there's no way those would have been my first words to them. I would have come through the doors and yelled at them. Like, wasn't anybody listening these last few years? Couldn't at least one of you have gone to the tomb and take a look? Three years, not one of you got it. But instead, peace be with you. And then it said, immediately he began to show them he was alive in the flesh. Peace be with you. Then it said, he showed them his hands and his side, inviting them to come over. Put your finger where the nail went through. Put your hand where the spear went through my side. I'm alive in the flesh, immediately beginning to teach them resurrection of the body. And we heard in that gospel that one of the apostles wasn't there, Thomas. Imagine when he came back later that day, they must have been screaming at him, yelling, Thomas, he is alive. We saw him. We touched him. We put our finger where the nail went through his hand. We put our hand where the spear went through his side. Thomas, he's alive in the flesh. And what does Thomas say? Don't believe it. In fact, Thomas said, I will not believe it until I put my finger where the nail went through his hand, until I put my hand where the spear went through his side. He wasn't asking for anything special. He just wanted what the others had already received. And so we hear what happened the next Sunday. Jesus comes through the locked doors. Peace be with you. And then he says to Thomas, Thomas, come over here. Put your finger where the nail went through my hand. Put your hand where the spear went through my side. Thomas, stop this disbelief. And then Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And Jesus said, Thomas, you believe because you see me, but how blessed are those who will believe without seeing me? That's us. You know, we have faith in the resurrection of Jesus in the flesh, but it's not a blind faith. Our faith is based on the testimony of the apostles who saw him and touched him and on the testimony of hundreds of others. One time he appeared to 500 people. But John concludes his gospel by saying, there's many other things that Jesus did that I didn't write in this book, but I'm just choosing these so that you can believe and have life in his name. That's why the first reading that we heard, it started out by saying Jesus stayed with the church for 40 days and 40 nights, teaching, instructing, alive in the flesh. One time you can read in the scripture, it even says they were eating bre- uh, fish. And Jesus walked up to them and said, look it, give me a piece of fish. Let me eat it right in front of you. A ghost can't eat. Still teaching them, alive in the flesh, 40 days and 40 nights. And on Ascension Thursday, which we'll celebrate soon, he said that he gathered with them on that hilltop and prepared to leave, to return to his father. And it says in the Gospel of Matthew, I think it's verse 20, chapter 28, it says, they bowed down and worshipped him. They got it. He's God. They got it. They bowed down and worshipped him, period. But some still doubted. Imagine Resurrection of the flesh, so fantastic. It wasn't until Pentecost Sunday, 10 days later. And by the way, the church always refers from Easter to Pentecost, those 50 days as one great day when the whole mystery unfolds. But it wasn't until Pentecost, the Holy Spirit coming upon them, they finally caught it. 
forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the flesh, redemption. Somebody paid the price of my sins. And I can live forever with him in the flesh. They finally got it. And then they changed the world. You're going to receive those seven gifts so that you can change your world to help you to believe that he is alive in the flesh. I'm certain that over this period of preparation for confirmation, you've heard about the great unity between baptism and confirmation. Two separate sacraments, but there's a union to them. And to kind of emphasize that uh, baptism confirmation, today when the sponsor brings the candidates forward, I'm asking the parents to come up at the same time. And I want you parents, you'll place your hands on their body just as you did when they were baptized. And on that day, you made some promises, and because you kept them, they're here today. But you're going to get to hear them make those, all their promises in their own name. But, but parents, when you come up, when you have your hands on them, ask, remember that baptism day. Remember the hopes that you had on that day, the dreams that you had. And ask God to really reanimate those in you so that you can continue to share it with them. Some of us here may be old enough to remember the Baltimore Catechism. Remember that? If someone asked you back then, tell me about baptism, you would know three things immediately. Wash clean of original sin, a member of the church, and you get to call the creator of the universe our Father. Three blessings. Every one of us would know them. Wash from baptism, wash from original sin, child of God, member of the church. What baptism does fundamentally is it makes us all equal before God. You read in the scripture discussing baptism, there is no distinction between Jew, Greek, male, female, slave, or free. Baptism makes us equal before God. Confirmation makes us different before God. Every one of you is going to receive the seven gifts of the Spirit, but you will receive them unlike anybody else in history to help you figure out and live the very specific life that God planned for you from before time began. It's a life only you can live. You live any other life, you'll achieve some level of happiness, but not the level of happiness for which you were created. It's a life only you can live. That's why you are so important to God and to the rest of us. You know, unfortunately, there really weren't too many confirmation letters this year, but every year I probably read close to 1,500 letters from young men and women preparing for confirmation. And every now and then, just every now and then, I get the feeling that someone is saying, I'm a mistake. I should not live in this place at this time, God doesn't have a plan for me. What confirmation does in the most powerful way is to let you know you are not a mistake. God has planned a life for you that only you can live. He intends for you to live in this place at this time, a life planned for you. And this is where the sponsors come in. Sponsors, I need to confess to you, I do not know who my confirmation sponsor was. I never met my confirmation sponsor, never spoke to him. And I'll bet any grandparent here, it's more likely than not that you don't know who your confirmation sponsor is either. Because back then what used to happen is the pastor would pick one man for all the boys and one woman for all the girls. Remember that? That's... And in some parishes, the pastor would even say, boys, you're all taking the name Joseph. And girls, you're all taking the name Mary. So, but I never met my sponsor. But here's the thing, sponsors. They chose you. They know you. And sponsors, beginning today and for the rest of your life, you pledge that you will do everything you can by your word and by your example to make sure the person at your side becomes a saint, that they get to heaven. After that, sponsors, you can have the afternoon off. But uh, 
but that's your task. You pledge that you will join anybody who loves them, anybody who has sacrificed or suffered. And by the way, every parent here, grandparent, you already know that love and sacrifice, you can't separate them. But anyone who loves them or sacrificed for them, you join them in helping them to figure out what is this specific life God chose for them. And you get them into heaven. You know, parents and grandparents here, everybody, all your priests, deacons, we all have the same job description, two-part job description. Part number one, get yourself into heaven. Now, you can't, we cannot work, earn, or pray our way into heaven. It's a gift, one for us on the cross that we accept. But our number one task, get into heaven. Number two, get the people that God trusts you with. Get them into heaven. Parents, think of how many hours you work every week for the good of their bodies, and it's a wonderful job you do. Food, education, health, housing. How many hours you work every week? All those gifts pale into comparison with whether or not they get to heaven. Think about it. So sponsors, this is your task. They know you. They chose you. Beginning today, for the rest of your life, do whatever you can to make sure they get to heaven. So just those who will be confirmed, just the men and young men and women who will be confirmed, please stand. Just those to be confirmed. Not the sponsors, just the kids. You're next. <laughs> Candidates for confirmation... On the day that you were baptized, your parents, godparents, grandparents, guardians, they made some solemn promises in your name. You're going to renew those promises in your own name now. But to assist you in that task and to listen to your answers, sponsors, would you stand at their sides now and place your hand or hands on their shoulders or shoulders, whichever is most comfortable for you and them. Sponsors, a hand on the shoulder is the ritual gesture of a sponsor for confirmation. Keep your hands on their shoulders till I ask them to sit down. And part of the time you'll have your hands on their shoulders, I'll extend my hand like this, in the ritual gesture of a bishop asking for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I will pray a special prayer identifying the seven gifts of the Spirit by name, especially at that time. Pray for them, pray for them, that they be open to receive those wonderful gifts. So candidates, I have some questions for you. The answers I do but we need to hear your response. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so my dear friends, Let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. And so I ask all of you now to bow your heads and to pray for them. Pray for your children and your grandchildren. Pray for your godchildren. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray that they be open to receive the seven wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit.
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Joan of Arc, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Gianna, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Albert, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Bridget, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Veronica, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. This one's getting confirmed. Bring the next one right up. Jude, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Francis, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. I present to you my niece, Francis. Francis, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Lucy, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Claire, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Gregory, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Please stand. We now place our prayers and our petitions before God, our loving Father. For Francis, our Pope, for Sean, our Bishop, and his assistant Robert with us today, for Father St. Martin, our pastor, and for me, that we lead the church as gentle and holy shepherds, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For these, his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those who they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer due to the coronavirus and for all who seek a cure, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that our Roman Catholic parish of St. John the Evangelist may speak words of life on behalf of those with no voice, especially the unborn, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bow your head now and remember and pray for your own beloved dead. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and will that through them and their successes the same spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay, Jeremy. Thank you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit. And may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the one true faith. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit who kindles the fire of love in the hearts of the faithful bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.